Welcome to the Grace Girls and Company podcast, hosted by none other than yours truly, Julie Tussie. This is a podcast for all the Grace Girls Jesus sends to listen in and join us. This podcast is filled with the word, encouragement, and sassy verb to help you be you and do you because he created you. All of our guests are going to inspire and fire you up and they're going to encourage you in a way you probably haven't been encouraged in a long time. So join us now as we go into the Grace Girls and Company Podcast. Welcome, welcome, welcome all you Grace Girls to the Grace Girls and Company Podcast. I am your hostess, Julie Tussie. I'm so glad to be here with you. Now, you may or may not have noticed there are going to be some changes with the Grace Girls and Company Podcast, and I could not be more excited. The Lord is good. Pastor Gary, um, both of us have been pastors for many, many years. Pastor Gary and myself are launching a virtual church called City Harvest um, Limitless Church. City Harvest Limitless Church. And we have joined with Rod Parsley and his ministry in the City Harvest Network to launch a virtual church here on Facebook and YouTube. And then we're also possibly going to actually open a church down the road. We're praying about that, but right now with the media ministry and the music and the podcasting, it's just what the Lord has instructed us to do, so we're going to do it. As a result, the Grace Girls podcast will probably have one upload per month and maybe a little bit more if I deem it necessary, but you may have noticed that the Julie Tussie Show and the Grace Girls and Company podcast has merged more and more, and that is by design. So please go over to the Grace, uh, go over to the Julie Tussie Show and subscribe there. You're going to hear the same exact words coming forth there, and you're going to get some more. We're going to be talking about weight loss, health, fitness, beauty, glamour, how to be the best version of yourself, everything that makes us a complete person, along with the Word of God. So you can stay here and go over to the Julie Tussie Show. Now, don't misunderstand me. The Grace Girls and Company podcast is going nowhere. It's staying here, but we are merging the two for weekly, weekly posts because of the time schedule. And you know what? When you're preaching a message, they're just going to end up all being the same because what God puts in your heart to teach is what God puts in your heart to teach. So I'm super, super excited. I hope you are. Please go on your podcast app right now, pause this and go and subscribe to the Julie Tussie show. Then go over to YouTube and look for Tussie television. If you search Julie Tussie or Tussie television, you're going to find me there and you're going to see Limitless Church there. You're going to see the show that Gary and I do together called M. Impact. You're going to see the Julie Tussie show and you're going to see real Gary Tussie um, teaching the word of God. You know what? We love you guys so much. We're doing everything that we can to be a blessing and minister to you. We know that God has a plan, purpose, and a design for your life. And we want to be part of God fulfilling that in you. We love you so much. So now I want to take you into a podcast that I just did. And it's also on YouTube, so you can go and see it. It's really, really cool. I do Facebook Lives while I'm doing this, so you can follow me over there, too, The Julie Tussie Show. And you can look for me personally and friend friend request me. So I want to take you to this podcast. Something really wild and crazy happened to me the day after Thanksgiving, which was actually our Thanksgiving dinner day. And the Lord really taught me a lesson out of it. And you talk about, I think, I think that this is the most uh, preaching I've ever done in my life. Like I just felt such a strong conviction and an anointing and empowerment of the Holy Ghost to bless and minister this to you to change your life also. So join the Julie Tussie Show now in progress as I share the podcast. The Brocktastrophe, the Thanksgiving Brocktastrophe, praise him in the middle of your mess. I think you're going to like it. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining me here on the Julie Tussie Show. I am your hostess with the mostest, I hopest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's been a fabulous week, and I wanted to talk to you about something really amazing. I don't think we'll be on real long today, but um, how many of you know, as I'm recording this, it is 
November the 28th. So we just had Thanksgiving and it was crazy. It was crazy. I'm telling you, we were talking about it on Impact a little bit with Gary. Gary and my husband, Gary Tussie, and I do another show called Impact. And we were talking about this, but with COVID, um, this has been the strangest year, but then let's add the holidays to it, right? Oh my gosh. I, You all, I had the worst Thanksgiving and it had to do, of course, with the isolation. It had to do with that we couldn't be with our families. Schedules were in the way. All of these things were happening, right? So we decide that we are going to have our, um, we still have two, our youngest two. I have two sets of twins. Let's just talk about that for a second. And the oldest set, they're married and having children. So yes, I'm a glamma. I'm not a grandma. I'm a glamma because uh, that's what my kids decided to name me. I probably all the bling and things and, uh, Anyway, so we've got that going on. Then we have another set of twins, the second set, and each set is a boy and a girl. And our youngest set of twins, one still lives at home and one just just relocated from our home to his own place. And he is a supervisor at Kroger's at uh, 21. I think they made him a supervisor when he was 20 or 19 doing a great job but boy the kid works a lot right so we were trying to have a dinner where he could come and be with his twin sister and the other twins could come if they wanted to um and try just keep it intimate also cooking a meal for my little italian mama if you listen to the podcast or watch the show at all you know that i have a little teeny tiny italian mother (laughs) like authentic italian and um so we wanted to cook a meal for her and you know it just it just was crazy so so it was kind of a little sad on thanksgiving you know just a little bit that we couldn't hug people and go and be people and gary and i are the kind of people that we always before this we would have 20 to 25 people in our home and we would bring in people that were like a you know couple with no kids and people just everybody we love to feed people we even have had a food bank in the past and we may have another one we're praying about that right now (laughs) so that is a lot of work but a lot of fun love to love to help people have everything they need and have a better life that's our whole motive in everything that we do so so it was kind of you know different sad unusual and we, um, so we just stayed home alone all day. We cooked our turkey because I, I'm kind of crazy. I'm used to feeding a family of eight, six kids, eight, and then now all of this. So we bought a 20, almost 21 pound turkey and we cooked that thing. So we cooked it on Thanksgiving morning. The house smelled great. It was wonderful. And don't get me wrong, Gary and I love to be together and we've gotten to spend a lot more time together since he um, had the heart attack and we're making changes in how we uh, live, how we do business. You know, we, we've had our own companies and now the Lord is wanting us to do more and more media ministry. So we're having a lot more time together. So we had a great time and things were going great you know but it was still a little sad can I get an up in here because a lot of us I'm sure are feeling that way a lot of us are feeling sad through the holidays and it's typically a normal time just without coronavirus that people become depressed anxious um, suicidal these kinds of things so you have to really guard against that so today I want to talk about some things that happen so we go ahead and we cook the turkey so the turkey's done right before Thanksgiving happens we buy this big turkey we bring it home and we have a refrigerator freezer in the house I'm sure many of you have this and then we have a smaller version of a refrigerator freezer in our garage because you know when you spend so much money on a refrigerator and then you get a new house or whatever with a nicer refrigerator or you just upgrade you put it in the garage right it's good for pop extra milk you know and we've had so many kids we've already always had 20 gallons of milk in the house it felt like So we come home with the turkey, and lo and behold, the freezer is not working. Okay, the freezer is not working. What's the next day Thanksgiving? Is anybody available to come and work on a refrigerator freezer? No. 
you know, it's in the afternoon. So we empty out the freezer, pitch what we can keep and uh, what we can't keep, what we feel like is vulnerable. Try to bring it in with the groceries for Thanksgiving dinner into our refrigerator, which is like standard size, right? I don't have a sub-zero or anything yet, wink, wink. And... Of course, it's stuffed to the gills, right? Just whatever we could keep through. So we lost a little bit of, you know, money there and some food. Then we go out the next morning on Thanksgiving Day and the refrigerator section is not working. We lost all kinds of yogurt and it's just only so much we could do. So we were, so we took that pretty good. You know what I mean? We're like, all right, all right, what are we going to do? Just move it. Then, on the day after Thanksgiving, which was yesterday, we're making the meal. I get up at 6.30 or 8.30 in the morning. I'm usually up at 6, but I, I'm just a night owl. So I get up at 8.30. I'm feeling good. Gary's feeling good. We actually slept in. That's a huge, huge thing to happen in our lives. And we start cooking the dinner at 8 30 because everyone that was invited was coming at 11 mostly it was just our son that was going to come but we were glad to have him and his twin sister that lives here right and then we we're going to take my mom some food so we start cooking and we're doing this and this and this and we got it you know we get we got it rolling it's really rolling things are going good the meat christmas music is on just to kind of give you the setting me and gary are just happy as two little larks you know <laughs> things are going great i begin to make my world famous world famous and if you want the recipe i will share it with you all you have to do is um message me on Facebook or reach out on TussieOnline.com and let me know you want it. But I begin to make my world famous broccoli cheese casserole. Yes. Now, when I say world famous, I'm talking about my world. (laughs) All of my family and friends know about this broccoli cheese casserole. Some of them, it's the highlight of their whole Thanksgiving dinner. And I humbly say, Yes, it's great. It's great. So I usually use frozen. I use frozen, but it was a lot of, you know, not a lot of the florette tops. So I had some fresh florette tops. And so it was just one, the top part of the broccoli. So I cut off the core. I cut it out, get it in there, getting it all cooked. Things are going great. There's a little bit of about one fourth of this head of broccoli that's just not good, right? It's just not good. So I throw it in the disposal. And I'm turning around in the microwave pre-cooking the broccoli. And I turn around and Gary's running the garbage disposal. Okay, because he's getting everything down. Well, two days earlier, we had made deviled eggs or one day earlier, the day before. And I don't put my eggshells down the disposal, but I think that they got down the disposal that day and they seem to go through. And I'm like, okay, good, because I didn't put them in the garbage, but they were gone. <laughs> With all my help. And so Gary turns on the disposal. I'm messing around in the microwave. I turn around and I look and I said, Gary, turn off the disposal. Turn it off. Turn it off. And he's like, what? And he said, just as I said that, his feet felt wet. And I'm going to tell you that that all of that broccoli ground up as fine as could be and poured through. First of all, I don't know what happened, the eggshells, the broccoli. I don't know what happened, but the trap got stuck and it blew apart the plumbing and the disposal still running. And this stuff is just exploding in the cabinet. And when I turn around, it is gushing. Gallons of water are gushing because, of course, the sink that I keep my dishes in in hot soapy water while I'm cooking that is blown. The pressure blew that up. So all that whole sink full of water, everything running down through the disposal comes pouring out the bottom of the cabinet. And it is a brock catastrophe. So many women are reaching out to me and asking why my skin is looking younger and younger. Well, I started on my Neora journey three months ago, and I have to tell you, I'm calling this a facelift in a bottle. If you'd like to get your skincare set today, visit julietussie.neora.com. 
That's juliehussey.neora.com. You can also reach out to me at thisgracegirllife at gmail.com with any questions and inquiries. The Grace Girls and Company podcast and the Julie Tussey Show podcast are outreaches of The Voice Incorporated, a nonprofit ministry. If you would like to give an offering or become a monthly VIP voice impact partner, please go to tussieonline.com slash give. That's tussieonline.com slash give. If you'd like to go to Venmo, you can go and look for The Voice INC and also on the Cash App, the money symbol, The Voice INC. We thank you so much for your support, your partnership, your prayers, and your consideration in giving. Remember, all gifts are tax deductible. Hey, if you'd like me to come and share with your women's group or your church meeting or set up a concert in your area, give me a holler. I'd love to come. You can reach me at the Julie Tussie Show at gmail.com. And we're back. I hope you're enjoying the music. I'm writing an eighth CD right now to be released in 2020. What, what? So excited about that. That's also a big part of the Grace Girl thing. And then um, I've got all of the music that you hear and some you're not hearing right over on Amazon. So just go search Julie Tussie or Gary and Julie Tussie and get some of this music because, oh my gosh, it's going to bless your socks off. A Brock catastrophe is happening in my kitchen. And so I look down and there is like foam green all over my beautiful, not cheap, rug that I keep in the kitchen. It It's beautiful and it is covered with foamy little teeny tiny pieces of broccoli, gallons of water. You all, it took six bath towels to absorb the water in the cabinet. In the cabinet. We took the rug, we rolled it up and took it outside and Gary hosed it down. And I'm telling you, I was just... It took me a half hour by hand to wipe the broccoli out of the underneath of my sink after I had to drag out. And I don't know about you all, but I am like, I have all my towels under the sink. I have all my cleaning products. I have some paper towel. I have eraser, you know, Mr. Clean erasers. I have all kinds of stuff under there. Uh, the bags from the store, the, you know, the little plastic bags. I have a pile of them tucked in the back. You can literally go on my page on the Julie Tussie show on Facebook and see the Brock catastrophe as it happens because I could not believe the water pouring out. And I thought, oh my gosh, if I've got to submit this to, uh, an insurance claim I'm going to have. So I took like eight seconds of videos of water pouring out. Right. So we're doing all that. We're trying to, to get this dinner done. I'm not even, I'm about one half of the way done. We finally get Gary gets all the couplings put back together and the seals in place and all that. It seemed like an eternity that he was doing that. I think it was a half hour 40 minutes or so that we were cleaning up the Brock catastrophe. And so we get it cleaned up. We have a tub, thank God, from our Christmas ornaments in the kitchen. There was a tub, empty tub sitting there. So we're like throwing everything in there. You guys, I had to do all of the towels, all the dish towels. And then we had to literally run a wash cycle on the and the washer has its own wash the washer cycle. And we ran that and we're still getting broccoli out of the out of the washer. I mean like I was wiping it out last night. Let's say I got to do blacks today and I'm a little concerned. <laughs> So anyway, we get all this mess cleaned up. We have a whole tub of all the cleaning products, all the the basket that had the towels in it, all these things. And we're just like, all right, we're going to let it sit outside for a day or two, see if it dries and wipe the broccoli off of it. So the Brock catastrophe was a real challenge for me. I'm on top of this odd thing. I can't see my mom face to face. I, um, I'm going to have to see her through a glass door, um, just all these things. Now my son has overslept and he's not coming on time, which was kind of a blessing because I had to finish cooking. But I remember standing back while I'm watching Gary fix that and a tear, literally a tear started rolling down my face. 
and I wanted to cry. And I remember wiping my tear away and I thought, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I am going to praise God in the middle of my mess. I am going to praise God in the middle of my mess. And when I, when that thought went through my mind, I knew that that's what the Lord wanted me to talk about. I thought, what a great topic, because, you know, right now life is really, really messy. Life is so messy and it is easier to give in to the woe is me or the anxiety or the depression or the suicidal thoughts or the this is never going to get better. This is life as we know it. This is the new normal. All of these things. It's so much easier to do that than to stop yourself and say, no, no, I am going to lift my hands and I am going to praise Jesus in the middle of my mess. Now, your mess might be different than mine. You probably didn't have a Brock catastrophe. <laughs> Although some people wrote to me about a little Christmas catastrophe that they had that was way worse than my Brock catastrophe. So I'm I'm thinking, God, you know, somebody's always got it worse. But I want to talk to you a minute about the fact that the holidays are coming. We are in a terrible place in uh, our lives with the coronavirus, the fear, the pandemic, the vaccines. Now we're in the middle of election turmoil and trouble and being uncertain. We are all so uncertain about where we're going, how we're going to get out of this mess, what's going to happen in our lives. You know, Gary and I, we travel and sing and minister and preach and teach. We can't go anywhere hardly. And Gary just had a heart attack, a massive heart attack that he should have died from. He had the widow maker and God just moved in miraculous ways, just proving to us once again that when you serve him and he's got a call on your life, he's going to take care of you. Gary was not done, and I know that. Good morning, Rebecca. Good morning, Linda. Good morning, Cindy on Facebook Live. We're doing a simulcast right here with Impact Television. I'm sorry, the Julie Tussie Show. I just did Impact an hour ago. The Julie Tussie Show, so Julie Tussie Television, the Julie Tussie Show podcast and a Facebook Live. So, All of these horrible things are happening, and we've got to find an answer, right? You've got to find a way to have peace of mind, and I am here to tell you that God is on the throne. Jesus is on the throne. He has not fallen off the throne because of COVID. He has not fallen off the throne because of the election. He has not fallen off the throne because you messed up. He has not fallen off the throne because you are an addict. He has not fallen off the throne because you lost your job. He has not fallen off the throne because you are going through a divorce. Whatever it is that you are facing today, he has, he is still your God, your father God, and he will provide for you. So when this Brock catastrophe happened and the emotions came and I wanted to begin to cry, I just wanted to throw everything down and say, that's just it. I'm done. I will in the natural. That's what I wanted to do. You all. That's what I wanted to do. But up because I know the word. I know the word of God up rose in me. No. I am going to praise him in the middle of my mess. In the middle of my mess. Oh my gosh, that just resounded in me. That changed the way that I acted. That changed the way that I um, dealt with things. That changed the way that I responded to a situation. I'm, oh my gosh, the word is full of examples. The word is full of examples. Um, about praising God. David said, if I make my bed in hell, he is there in the midst. He is there with me in hell. The Holy Ghost is with you. He is with you. And as I was thinking about this, I wanted to read this to you because I'm, you know what? I think, okay, I was going to say this. I've been a Christian for over 40 years and I've been in ministry for 40 years. And I think that God kind of gets like a rush when we are when we are in trouble not saying that he causes the trouble but I think he's like yeah like as a parent when my child is in trouble 
it gives me so much pleasure and joy to go and rescue them, <laughs> to aid them, to encourage them to make the smart decisions to get out of this mess, right? So the the Brocktastrophe, that mess, just kind of brought this for, forth in me. And this morning I was praying about it and thinking about it. And so many scriptures, and I'll read a couple. I'll read you a psalm to talk to you about it. But so many scriptures talking about praising him. Do you know when you will take that time to just put your foot down and say, you know what? I'm going to praise you. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if the whole world is against me. It doesn't matter if it feels like my life is crumbling. It doesn't matter if this looks like it cannot be changed. It doesn't matter if it looks devastating. It doesn't matter. God has made provision for me and I am going to praise him whether it resolves or not. You know, whether there's an answer that I want to this or not, I am going to praise him. He is worthy to be praised. He is the father God of your life. He is your father and he is worthy to be praised and he loves to be praised. And the devil hates when you praise God, especially in the middle of your mess. He hates that, you all. He hates that. So as I was praying, this came to me. I thought about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Abednego, (laughs) Abednego. Say that three times. So I wanted to read a little bit about this. Now, you you may or may not know about King Nebuchadnezzar. Is that how you say it? I better read his name. Nebuchadnezzar. (laughs) You know, you have to laugh because these names are hard to say. They're very hard to say. But he had a he had a dream that troubled him, and the Lord sent, um, I believe it was Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Let me read. I want to find this exactly who interpreted. It. Yeah, Daniel, because it is. It's Daniel three. Um, so the Lord sent Daniel to the king Nebuchadnezzar, and he interpreted the dream for him. So. When he did that, the king was very troubled and no one could interpret it. And then Daniel comes along and he interprets the dream for King Nebuchadnezzar. Well, all of a sudden, Daniel is like the flavor of the month, right? Daniel is the, in the king's eyes, he's like so favored. So the king, all of a sudden, Daniel went from whatever he was doing to being appointed by the king and given some pretty big clout in his kingdom. Let's read that. Then the king made Daniel, this is um, two, Daniel 2, 48. Then king made Daniel a great man and gave him many great gifts. Ever been there? Gave him many great gifts and made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon <laughs> and chief of the governors over all the wise men of Babylon. Then Daniel requested of the king and he set Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Abednego, over the affairs of the province of Babylon, but Daniel sat in the gates of the king. He sat in the gate of the king. So Daniel's gift made room for him, right? The Lord gave him the interpretation to this dream. He goes and he sets the king. He makes it clear. Doesn't necessarily say things the king wants to hear, I'm sure. But he sets he sets the king free from this not knowing what the what his dream was about. He didn't understand it. And that we'll te- we can teach about that sometime what that dream was. There's a lot in there. But what I wanted to show you was that Daniel was in this place that now of prominence, of favor, of greatness. Um, he is all of a sudden over men that he would never probably dream he would be over, right? So he's there over these men appointed by the king. And he's in the place, honey. He's in his place. He's rocking this thing. He is feeling good about his life. Things are going good. And then all of a sudden, right? And then all of a sudden. So maybe you've been there. Maybe the COVID has knocked you off. Maybe you've lost your job. And I'm not belittling any of this, but I am here to tell you that there is hope. There is hope. But sometimes when things are going smooth and you get knocked knocked off, you've got to stand up. You've got to stand up. So let's read chapter three um, uh, just a little bit, okay? 
Nebuchadnezzar, the king. So all this has happened. Things are going great. The king understands the dream. He gives all this favor and gifts. You know what I mean? Like you probably gave him a penthouse and things like that. Things are going good. And then the king, who is not a man of God, okay, the king made an image of gold whose height was three scores cubits. It's in other words, it was it was big, whose height was sixty cubits or ninety feet, and its breadth was six feet or nine feet. So ninety feet by nine feet he makes this um image of gold. He set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent to gather together the musicians and the governors and the judges, okay? The treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs and the lawyers and all the chief officials of the king, of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which King Nebuchadnezzar had caused to be set up. So then the satraps, the deputies, the governors, the judges, all of the same people stood before the image of Nebuchadnezzar that he that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. And then the herald cried aloud, You are commanded, O peoples, nations, and languages, that when you hear the sound of the musicians that he had called, and he lists, it lists all these uh, musical instruments that we wouldn't recognize mostly today, you are to fall down and worship the golden image that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall that very hour be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. Oh, my Lord. I mean, he just had the interpretation from a man of the God of all gods, the Lord of all lords, the actual God. And right on the heels of this, he he builds this golden idol that people have to worship. But then he takes it a step further and says, and if you don't bow and worship this idol, I will throw you in a fiery furnace. Oh my goodness. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall that very hour be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. Therefore, when all the people heard the sounds of all these instruments, they worshiped the golden image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. So, and then I want to skip ahead. Let's see. Let's go to verse, uh, this is Daniel 3, verse 15. Now, if you are ready when you hear the sound of all of the, the instruments to fall down and worship the image which I have made very good. Wait a minute. Let's see. Then Nebuchadnezzar, let's go Let's go a little bit for, I got to go back because what actually happens, let me just uh, paraphrase it. What happens is Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Oh yeah, I did miss that. I did miss that. Um, they go in and they will not worship. So now if you be ready to worship, but you worship not, you shall be cast into the same hour into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you? So in 13, he was already getting mad because Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego have did not regard, would not submit. They would not give in to this mess. They would not give in to this mess. So there were certain Jews in verse 12, whom thou hast set over the affairs of the providence of the province of Babylon. So this is where Daniel set them over Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded you. They serve not your gods, nor do they worship the golden image that you had set up. So this, this is what his, the king's Uh, reporters came to tell him. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spoke and said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? And He says, now, if you're ready that at what time you hear the sound of these instruments, you fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if you worship not, you will be cast basically in in the same hour into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? All right. Now, right there, he crossed the line. He just challenged God, right? He challenged God. 
Woo! <laughs> Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, it is not necessary for us to answer you on this point. If our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, he will deliver us out of your hand, O oh, king. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image which you have set up. Now, I love this. I love this. That was verse 18. I love this. Basically, what they're saying to the king is our God is able to deliver us from this fiery furnace. But if he doesn't, we will not bow to your image we will not bow to your idols we will not bow to your god i love that i'm talking about praising him in the middle of your mess you talk about taking a stand when these things of life are coming against us we're dealing with covid we're trying to be safe we're trying to be healthy we're trying to be careful not to spread what a, the covid virus we're trying to keep our jobs but not but we're losing them. We're trying to feed our children, but there may not be food. We're trying to not have a Brock, ta- a Brock, um, broccoli explosion under the sink. <laughs> it could be as little as that or as big as not having the things that you need. In the middle of that, you've got to get a tenacity about you where you stand up and you say, no, no. Jesus died on a cross. He provided for me and my family. And I am going to lift my hands and praise him. And you pray for deliverance. But if he doesn't deliver me, mess, if he doesn't deliver me, devil, I am not going to bow. I am not going to bow. Ever will I lift my hands and praise him. Ever, ever will I lift my hands and praise him. And when you do that, I'm telling you what, you do something in the spirit. We don't have to give in to desolation. We don't have to give in to anxiety. We don't have to give in to fear. God is on the throne. He is your father. He loves you. He will provide for you. But you've got to get a tenacity within yourself where you love him so much and you trust him so much that you stand for what he stands for, that you will lift your hands and say, God, though you slay me, I will serve you. I want, I need you to move here, God. But if no food comes in my door, God, we're going to trust you. We're going to make a stand. We're not going to give in. We are going to praise you in the middle of our mess. We're going to praise you, Jesus, whether you come through or not. I love that, you guys. I love that. There is something about it. And does he come through? Yes. Is it always the way we think? Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. But I'm telling you what, God is on your side. God is on your side. And when you get in the middle of that mess, you're going to see when we read this more, he will show up for you. He will show up for you. So then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury and his facial expression was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now I'm telling you just if, just what? Uh, We don't know how long the time was, sorry. We don't know how long it was, but Daniel interpreted the dream. The king, all of a sudden, he's the king's flavor of the month, and he gives him, you know, the province of Babylon to rule over. And and David, uh, Daniel's like, I have some men that can handle this, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and I'm putting them in place. So they are like the cat's meow. They're in the penthouse. They're living the high life. They've been recognized for the greatness that God's put in them. And then, and then, they dared, they dared to stand up for what they knew was right. They dared to not bow their knee and not give in to these things, not give in to the craziness of the rulers of the land right then. All right. So then he was full of fury. And of course, you're going to make people mad, you guys, when you stand up, when you can lift your hands and praise Jesus in the middle of your mess, you're going to make the devil mad, but they're going to be people that are mad because they don't want you to succeed. They want you to be in the woe is me. They want you to be in the life. Of, this is the new normal. We're never going to do this. I can't do that. I can't. No, there are people that want you there with them. That's the they. That's the they. Okay. No. No. They're going to get mad. So he was full of fury and his facial expression was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore, he commanded that the furnace should be heated seven times hotter than it was usually heated. Oh, my gosh. You talk about getting in the heat in your mess. You can get in the heat. I could give you testimonies of being in the heat. 
where it just looks like it's never going to stop and you made the wrong decision and you're looking like a fool. You're saying you're going around saying, praise God. God's got my back. He's going to see me through this. OK, that's that's what I'm talking about there. The devil gets mad and it intensifies. Sometimes that mess, you all, is going to get worse before it gets better. That mess is going to get worse before it gets better. Pastor David Amos is on. He said, stand for what he stands for. Yes. We must stand for what he stands for, especially in the hour. And we could go on. I could go on talking about some of the things going on in our nation and in our world that are just not God. They are not God. And if you have the word of God in you, if you have Jesus as your savior and you have the Holy Ghost in in you, you can be led by this word. You can be led by the spirit of God to know what is right and wrong. Do not be brainwashed. Do not be brainwashed. Okay. Do not. So they lit that furnace seven times hotter. Then, then, (laughs) he commanded that the furnace be heated seven times hotter. And then he commanded the strongest men in his army to bind. Not only is he throwing them in there, man, he's, uh, he is um, binding them. He's tying them up. Talk about not being able to get out at all. He is tying them up, bind that to bind them up. And cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. Then these three men were bound in their cloaks, their tunics, and their undergarments, their turbans, and their outer clothing, other clothing, and they were cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Now, most people would think, my hair is wild today, sir. Most people would think that that is the end of it, right? And they stood right there and said, if if he cut he will he can he's fully capable and if he doesn't we're still not bowing i'm not bowing i'm not bowing you all and i hope that you are getting encouraged by this because we are not going to bow to the things of the world we are not going to bow to the pressures and the things it okay all right back to my text Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame and sparks from the fire killed those men that handled Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. (gasps) I don't believe I've ever seen this like I'm seeing this right now. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Then these three men were bound in their cloaks. Therefore, the king's commandment was urgent in the furnace, exceedingly hot. The flame and sparks from the fire killed those men who handled Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. All right, I'm going to tell you something right now. God is telling me to tell you this. When you will stand up, when you will praise him in the middle of your mess, when you will stand up and they put you and you're going through the fire, I am telling you right now by the spirit of God that the very thing that the enemy meant for your harm is going to burn up your enemies. Those that are coming against you, they're the ones that are going to be burned up in this thing. And you got to be ready to walk in forgiveness. You've got to be ready to walk in love because the enemy uses people, but they are God's people. God loves them. God wants them. There's a lot of evil out there, but every soul is valuable, precious, and important to God. So yes, there are people who have talked bad about you. I can testify. There are people that have talked bad about you, people who are judging you, people who are watching you, people who want your failure, but you've got to forgive them because they're going to answer. These men, they were obeying the king and threw them in the fire and they were burned up. They were burned up. I know there's more. I'm going to soak on that for a while. God's going to show us some more out of that. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the burning fiery furnace. And then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, saw and was astounded and he jumped up and said to his counselors did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire and they answered true king yeah we just threw three guys in there and he answered behold i see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire and they are not hurt Woo! (laughs) i love that you know who the fourth man was right that was god that was jesus the fourth man. When you are in the middle of your mess, you are not alone. The scripture says in Psalms, David said, if I make my bed in hell, he is there with me. He is with you, my loves. He is with you. He is with you. 
Behold, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt. And from and the form of the fourth is like a son of the God. So even this king who didn't know God from a paper cup, he recognized that this was a God. This was the God. He just didn't know it was the God. So then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you servants of the most high God, come out here and come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out from the midst of the fire. I love that. <laughs> and the the satraps, the deputies, governors, and the king's counselors. I got stuff falling out of my Bible, y'all, because I'm throwing it around like I own it. They all came out and gathered around together and saw these men that the fire had no power upon their bodies, nor was the hair of their heads singed, neither were their garments scorched or changed in color or condition, nor had even the smell of smoke clung to them. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god therefore i decree that every people nation and language which spake anything amiss against the god of shadrach meshach and abednego shall be cut in pieces <laughs> this guy was evil and their houses shall be made a dunghill because there is no other god that can deliver after this sort then the king promoted shadrach meshach and abednego in the province of babylon now man we could do we could do series on this we could we could teach so long on this, but I want to show you. I want to show you two things out of this. Number one, things were going great. Then things got hard, but these men took a stand for Jesus. They took a stand for what they knew was right. They took a stand in the middle of the mess. What a mess! What a mess to be to be told you're going to be thrown in a fiery furnace if you don't worship an idol, and you know that the word teaches you not to worship anybody but your God, but the living God, right? So not only did God see them through this, things are going great. They're going through this mess. They get in the mess. Honey, they got in the fire of the mess. They got thrown in the fire. Things were horrible, just horrible. But they were not going to bow. When you lift your hands and praise him, you are telling him, you are telling him, God, you have your way in this situation. Good, bad, or indifferent, I will worship you. And you are dedicated. It shows your dedication. But not only that, it breaks a mentality in you, a victim mentality, a lack of control mentality, a lack of future mentality. These very things that bring anxiety, depression, suicidal thoughts, fear, all the things that we've been dealing with in 2020. So I want to encourage you today. Not only did they get in the fire, but God rescued them out of the fire. The powers that be saw the greatness of God, the rescuing power of God. And he changed what he was decreeing in the land for worshiping God. I love that. We're talking about a king, you all, a big major king. And then I love that not only did they not even look like they'd been in a fire, but they didn't even smell like it. And God will bring you out the same way. God will bring you out the same way. I love that. God is so faithful. He is so faithful. Oh my gosh. I love him so much. Now, let me see if I can pull up a Psalm real quick. Psalm 34, one. I'm just going to read it real quick to you. Woo, I hope you guys are enjoying this. I love this. Okay, so in the middle of your mess, if you haven't heard it, definitely go back and listen to the replay. I had a brock catastrophe. Broccoli ground up and spewed in gallons of water all over my kitchen. And the Lord said to me, I, just showed me in my spirit that this statement that came to my mind I should teach on today, and it was, when I wanted to cry, when I wanted to give in in the middle of this mess, this Thanksgiving mess that's been going on for a while, I said, no, 
I will praise him in the middle of my mess. And that's where this message came out. So listen to this. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. I say in the name of Jesus that we no longer have fear. I say that you are free from fear. For God has not given you a spirit of fear, but he's given you power, love, and a sound mind. Power, love, and a sound mind. A sound mind. A sound mind. God wants you to be at peace. He wants you to be at peace. Well, I hope this was an encouragement to you guys so much. Now, I want to talk to you about a couple of things, and then I'm going to pray for you. Number one, beginning the first Sunday in January 2021, we're going to be launching Limitless Church, a virtual church on Facebook and YouTube. And we're going to launch that. And every Sunday morning, I think at nine, and then you can have the replays, Gary uh, Gary and I are going to preach. We have pastored. We're, we've been in ministry for him, I think, 43 years, me 40 years, and I'm 30. Wink, wink. And um, so we're going to be launching that. Now, we want to ask you to partner with us. And first of all, we want to pray for you. We have a dedicated telephone line that you can leave a message. You can tell us if you want us to call back or not, or just leave your prayer request. That number is 859-519-0239, 859-519-0239. You'll see it on the screen if you're watching television. And we want you to call. We want to hear your testimonies. We want to hear what you're believing God for. We want to pray with you. We want to covenant with you and become partners with you in prayer. The second way you can become a partner is you can go to TussieOnline.com. T-U-S-S is in Sam, S-S-E-Y, T-U-S-S-E-Y, online.com. And you can become a partner there. You can give a one-time offering. You can become a monthly partner, which is the best, if you ask me, because then you're in constant relationship and contact with each other, and we can really see God move and do some great things. But you know it takes finances to do what we're doing. We all know that. This is life. It's real. When you become a partner, you're going to get a copy of Speak the Word Only. This is really really, really cool, you guys. It's a simple reading of scripture to help understand God's word. It's by topic. It's just simply the scriptures being read by topic. And right now, the one that we've released is Overcoming Anxiety and Fear. This one's by me. We have another one. We have a whole series, another one by Gary Tussie called um, The Parables of Jesus. But you just pop this in. You can get a downloader. You can get a free CD and you will learn the word of God. What changes your life? The word of God. What changes the way you think the word of God. So you're not going to hear commentary. You're not going to hear teaching. You're not going to hear preaching. You're going to hear what the word says about overcoming anxiety and fear. And we want you to have that. So please go to TussieOnline.com. Now, while you're there, you can become a part of our mailing list. We've had a mailing list for a long time. I think we're going to do a mailing once a month in the beginning. So you don't have to worry about spam. We don't sell your information, blah, blah, blah. So you can also listen to music there. You can listen to podcasts there. You can find the Facebook links. You can watch videos there. It's really, really cool. It's in the middle of being built, but it's up enough that you can go and find the donate button to become a partner or go in and, and give yourself opportunity to hear and see these other things. Um, we have a Christmas CD right now, Merry Merry Christmas. It's the 1st of December, and it's called Merry Christmas. You can email me and Gary at Gary and Julie Tussie at Gmail, and we can get you a copy of that. There's all kinds of stuff available for you to be blessed. Well, I'm going to pray for you right now. <clears throat> Thank you, Father. Lord, I thank you for each and every person that is watching or listening today. God, I ask you that you supply every need that they have. I say that they have the job of their heart's desire, that they have the perfect job for their family, that they have food, that they have clothing, that they have every provision made. Father, I thank you for those that are called according to your purpose that you make a way for them. Father, I thank you for health and safety. We say that if coronavirus comes near us, it dies in the name of Jesus. I thank you for those fighting coronavirus in the hospitals, 
miracles in that home right now. And I say that they are healed by the stripes of Jesus, that they were healed already. Father, I ask you that your healing power manifest in their bodies and heal them in your mighty name. Now, Lord, we just take time to worship you and we thank you, Father God, that you are the God of victory, that you are our Father, that you want to see us be successful in every area of life. So, Lord, we just praise you and thank you that you have your perfect will with this ministry, with every person listening and watching that in their lives, you have your perfect will. Anoint them, God. Bless them. Give them favor. And make, I thank you, Father, that they are blessed where it comes in to running over. It's pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Will men give unto their bosoms? In Jesus' mighty name, I say every need is met over and above, and that your blessing is on them. Thank you so much, you guys. Thank you for joining me here on the Julie Tussie Show, Julie Tussie TV, and on Facebook, and on the Julie Tussie Show podcast. Please subscribe before you leave here on YouTube. If you're listening to the podcast, give us a great review. Let your friends and family know what we're doing. And for those of you on Facebook, thank you so much. If you will, share this to your page. I want to tell you that Jesus loves you, and I love you so much, too. God bless. Mwah. So if you partner right now, you'll get a copy of this CD called Speak the Word Only. What this is, is simply reading scriptures. Gary chose the topic of the parables of Jesus, and his are not really, really long. So you pop it in your car while you're driving to work or whatever. There's no commentary, no preaching, no ministering, nothing. The Word, the Word. How many of us need to learn more of the Word of God? You will get this free when you become a monthly partner. And you can do that at TussieOnline.com forward slash give or just go to the page and look for give. I love you guys so much. I'm so appreciative that you were here with me today. Please do reach out to me, Gary, and let us know how you're doing. Message me. Let me know what you're doing. And let me know what God's doing in your life. There you go. And thank you so much for tuning in to Grace Girls and Company, the podcast today. We are so glad, so glad that you joined us. Now, I want to tell you a couple of things. Number one, I love you. Number two, Jesus loves you so much. I pray that your day is blessed. I pray that your week is blessed. I pray that your life is blessed. Every need is met in the name of Jesus and every bit of the call of God on your life is fulfilled. Reach out to me at thisgracegirllife at gmail.com. You are listening to the Grace Girls and Company podcast where dreams really do come true. We'd like to invite you to become partners with us at The Voice. You can go to TussieOnline.com and you can give a one-time offering or become a partner there. We will do everything we can to make this the easiest thing you've ever done. We're going to make it simple. You can also go to Venmo, The Voice, I-N-C, and you can go to the Cash App, Cash Symbol, The Voice, I-N-C. It's as simple as that. All gifts are tax deductible. Thank you so much, you all. Thank you so much for listening to the Grace Girls and Company podcast and the Julie Tussie Show podcast. I appreciate you. I want you to know this. Jesus loves you, and I love you so, so much. Until we talk next time, God bless you. If you like the music that you hear on here, we have so much music available over on Amazon. You can go to Amazon.com and search Gary and Julie Tussie or Julie Tussie, and you can find one of our seven CDs. Now, when you do order your CD, please remember to pray for us. We're going in the studio hopefully before the end of the year, but maybe not, and we're recording our eighth CD. Woo-woo! We love you guys. If you want answers to health problems other doctors couldn't solve, like hormone imbalance, fatigue, weight gain, and mood issues, go to Dr. Shannon Pierce and the Journey to Wellness. You can find her on Facebook. Again, you can find Dr. Shannon Pierce on Facebook. The Facebook page, Thyroid and Hormones Women's Support Group. Let them know Julie sent you. Dr. Shannon Pierce and the Journey to Wellness is an official sponsor of the Julie Tussie Show and the Grace Girls and Company podcast. 
You are not created to be ordinary, but extraordinary. You are not created to be common, but uncommon. You are not created to be average, but above average. You are not created to be tolerable or passable. No, but you are created to be remarkable, noteworthy, impressive, striking, outstanding, brilliant, excellent, superb, praiseworthy. We could go on and on about how awesome you are. Thank you so much, everybody, for all that you do. I'm so appreciative of you, the listeners. If you are in the United States, if you're in Paris, if you're in London, if you're in the Netherlands, if you're in Australia, North Korea, wherever you're listening from, and yes, those are places where everyone has listened, we love you. I love you very, very much, and Jesus loves you. So please share the podcast with your friends and family, and until next week, we'll see you soon podcast, go to TussieOnline.com now, my sister, and become a VIP, a voice impact partner with me on a mission from God to reach women with the gospel of Jesus. And thank you so much for your kind consideration. And remember, all gifts are tax deductible. Hey, if you'd like me to come and share with your women's group or your church meeting or set up a concert in your area, give me a holler. I'd love to come. You can reach me at the Julie Tussie Show at gmail.com. I want to take a minute to say thank you so much to our supporters, underwriters, sponsors, those of you that give to our nonprofit corporation, The Voice Incorporated. We are grateful for your partnership and we thank you so, so much for helping to enhance, encourage, and bless the lives of others. Hands